a, a mall walker um, or a weightlifter. And that brings me into the resistive part of the training. Next slide. Um, and basically, I, I've only, this is just one study that they showed. And, and this study just showed from Reiner exactly what I, I told you. High intensity, 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate um, was what lost the most body. And the group that did that, they lost the body fat. No significant change in body fat was found in the lower intensity group. So those who worked out at 60 to 70 percent of the maximum heart rate, they had no difference. You know, there was no body fat difference, and yet they'll continue to lose muscle at a certain point and actually gain body fat. So that's actually the study. If you want to do a search on it, that's one of them. They did a lot of studies on rats. Uh, I talked about that in my seminar, but this was the one of the studies done on humans. That's through. So okay, great. Uh, okay. One of my biggest things that I get is how can I incorporate resistive training and burst training? Okay, now, I gave you in the seminar, in one of my seminars, they cross in my mind, but I gave you a simple thing that most of you can do. And I'll remind you with that what that is. Open up your things. Well, before I even explain these exercises, let me just show you that one first, okay, to remind you. And then I'm going to get into this resistive training. And then I'm going to show you how to do them both at the same time. Very clever, okay? So, what you do with this, the idea is to get the heart rate up, okay? I have 50-pound dumbbells here, believe it or not. They're made out of tungsten. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to squat, which these are the largest muscles in the body, and these, okay? Everyone understand that these are muscles under here? <laughs> okay, so way under there somewhere. Okay, all right. So, um, so now, what we want to do is we want to stimulate those muscles because that's going to get the blood pump. Now, when you get blood pumping from here into here, back and forth, back and forth, that raises your heart rate up really fast. So this is what this does. It's really called squat thrust. So you're taking these, you're squatting down to with your knees. If I know I'm going to get this question, so I'll just answer right now. <laughs> if you have bad knees, put a chair under your butt, okay? And don't squat down. Just don't squat into pain, okay? So you take these, you squat down, curl up, push up, okay? This is what you're doing. Okay, now what I'm doing by doing this, and the idea, guys, don't count reps due time. You want to do that as fast as you can for a minute. Now you say, well, but what if I'm not breathing heavy enough? Well, congratulations, increase your weight. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, ten pounds is you know, good. But even if I took these ten pounders myself, and if I did this like this for a minute, you know, I'm telling you I'd be huffing it about a minute. Okay. But the idea is this: Look, I'm working the major muscle groups. I'm working my thighs. I'm working my glutes. I'm working my triceps. I'm working my biceps, and I'm working my shoulders. Okay. And any time you're doing this, you're working core muscles. You have to. Okay. There's the major muscle groups. So now you just did the major muscle groups in a burst training format. And how many times would you do that? Many times for the time. Yeah, right, right. I mean, well, right. How, as many times as the time. Right. So you do that for a minute, but you would do it three or four times. So now you've got resistive training combined with burst training. That's the simplest thing you can do. Well, it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're squatting, you're curling, you're pushing. When I'm pushing, I'm working my tries, my shoulders. When I'm curling, I'm working the front of my arm, the thighs. Okay? When you're squatting, obviously, you're working your glutes and your thighs. That's like the clean jerk. Yeah, exactly. It's one of the best exercises you can possibly do. My friend Tom Eisman, he holds every world record in deadlifting. Um, he has, the guy's amazing. I mean, he's... Um, He's 51 years old right now. He's still setting deadlift records. Um, he's one of the only people in the world. It, um, he was at 180 pounds and he deadlifted over 800 pounds. Yeah, so he's an amazing guy. And he has all the physiology on just doing a simple deadlift. Because the whole thing is don't bend over this way. You're, you are meant to bend over that way. Um, so having a little bit of bend in your back is actually not bad. Just work up to it. Okay. Because your back is meant to do that. I mean, God literally designed us to be able to bend. Where people get into trouble, by the way, isn't bending straight over in a deadlift position. It's when you turn with a weight. So taking these dumbbells and going like this, you're setting yourself up for you know some back problems there. Okay, because you're actually causing torsional stress on the discs.
yes, they can they can fail. Okay? So we were meant to do this. We just meant to weren't meant to do that with heavyweight. It's just not a work thing. This is working. Okay? Alright, so does, there, does everyone get this now? So that's just the simplest thing you can do. Okay, now let's look at this. Alright. What I've done is if you wanted to do separately your resistive training, you could go through this separately. What I do a lot of the times, I do my resistive training and then I do my burst training right when I'm done. And I'll do that three times a week. Okay, so you could go through these exercises. These are basic core exercises for the main groups in the body. You could do these and then simply do your treadmill uh, afterwards. Does everyone understand that? Okay, or we can combine them, which I'm going to show you. I don't. Can we do more different things? You, well, that's the you 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 can. You could actually set weight lift, it, but it, it's taking away a lot of your fat burning effectiveness. So you're better off, honestly, doing it on the same day. Okay. This is written down. I don't want to spend a lot of time going through this with you. Okay. Um, if you want me to, I will. But you know, these exercises. Um, are very basic. The first one, let's just talk about it, the lunge. The lunge, you see that there's a chair there, and I think that's a really good recommendation, because now the lunge, when you do this, it's a balanced thing. However, when you can get to the point where you don't need the chair, don't use it, because you're using a thousand neuroreceptors, mechanoreceptors to do that, and you actually work more ligaments, tendons, and muscles without the chair, okay? So, you can see that he's doing it without a weight. He's just simply lunging. Don't hit the knee on the ground and then come up and push back. Okay? Now, so you can lunge and stay in the position. Do you see what I'm doing? Okay? Or you can lunge and push back. Okay? So there's a couple ways to do it. But the point is stepping forward, down, and then pushing back. And I like to fire off the leg as hard as you can. Okay? Um, you can, once that gets easier, you can take dumbbells, hold them in each hand. This is after you've evolved from the chair. And you're going to do the same thing holding dumbbells. You're going to step out and then step back. And then I like to alternate legs like that. Okay? Man, if you do that for the first time, you, you're, when you go to sit on the toilet the next day, you're <laughs> cursing me. They, those make me sore, more sore than anything, uh, for whatever reason. Because here's what you're doing. You're getting a stretch on the hamstring, and the back thigh is stretching, and you're using your glutes. So you're working your thighs, your hamstrings, and your glutes. You're working every muscle. Yes. When you do the weight, like I do the weight training at the Y, you know, with the weight machines and stuff. Um, when you do that, and they, the machines will tell you that you're doing it too fast. Does that really matter? No, actually, um, I think there's a benefit of doing it too fast because you're firing a lot of muscles. Oh. Uh, you know, you, you've heard of the plyometrics. They train athletes. They have them burnt. They have them fired as fast as they can. Uh, but now, there's, there, you work a little different muscle when you do go slower. So I think it's good to combine both. Yeah. And I like mixing it up. Um, but it doesn't hurt you to then. It's good to do it. No, I, I, I think it's good to switch it around. Some days I, I you know, some days I literally go slow, do slower contractions. Other days I do faster contractions because your muscles, guys, are just like anything else. They get used to what you do. And one thing you can do is switch exercises. Don't do the same thing. That's why I gave you choices here. So if you do something this week, let's say, uh, for example. Um, you did, uh, you know, squats and leg extensions in the gym. Next time, do squats and lunges. So switch it around because your body gets used to it. Mix it up, okay?